How great is the falling away? And should we take it seriously? If you turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Let no man deceive you but by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now, a lot of things have been coming up lately, and I just felt I got to do this talk about the falling away, and have to ask how great is the falling away, and are, not that we should, but brothers and sisters in Christ, are you taking it seriously? Right now, Bible-believing Christians are dropping like flies. Not that they're losing their salvation, but they're dropping like flies when it comes to standing, not fainting, not faltering, standing for the absolute truth. So the first one we're going to talk about and the great falling away, um, I'll link it in the uh, comment, our subscription part. Uh, Brother Brian at King James Video Ministries did a great video called The Great Falling Away. It was done three years ago. And I was shocked that I've been following it for his ministry for four years. And when he did that video in the three years, I'm shocked when I think about it how great, greater, the falling away, falling away is today than it was three years ago. So the first thing is the gospel. Okay. True biblical salvation. First part, repentance towards God. Okay. 2 Corinthians 7.10, For godly sorrow worketh, worketh uh, re repentance, to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrows of the world worketh death. Luke 15, 7, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Um, kind of like uh, in the book of Mark, um, Jesus, saying, Jesus saith unto them, they that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came out to call the righteous, but sinners, to repentance. 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish. It's talking about hell. That, that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Okay. Repentance leads to salvation. Repentance does not save you, but it leads to salvation. One of my biggest on uh, my uh, testimony video, I do it like a road map. Okay. Some place downtown is giving away a free car. It's free. It's yours. It's free. Okay. You just gotta come down there and we can give it to you. Here's the directions, okay? And you've got people saying, well, I don't want to go left, so I'm just going to keep going straight. And then instead of going left a second time, I'm going to go right. And the next thing you know, you're lost. And yes, even <laughs> spiritually, but physically you'd be lost if you don't follow the directions to the T, okay? And today, people are taking, I mean, they did in the past, but it's getting worse and worse. Repentance is not even mentioned hardly anymore when people preach the gospel. It's just admit you're a sinner, and you look up the true biblical definition of repentance, and it's having sorrow for sinning against God. Just like in 2 Corinthians 7.10, for godly sorrow, you're sorry for sinning against God. And that's not there anymore. So people have taken that out for a while. 
Uh, next, the belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. 1 Corinthians 15.1 Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory that I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. It is written, it is written, and a lot of people today, the whole gospel message about Jesus Christ, are they truly talking about the real Jesus Christ of Scripture? Or are they making up their own Jesus Christ, this easy believism, faith alone, faith alone. You're saved by your faith through God's grace. No, you're saved by grace through faith, and it takes faith to repent, and it takes faith to believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. But it started, and it's continued today, that the real Jesus of Scripture, it's like nobody knows who He is. You go, I go hand out gospel tracts, and I lay gospel tracts everybody. People see my shirt, and sometimes they, catch, they see me catching, catching, see me carrying the King James Bible, and when I go to talk to them about the real Jesus of Scripture, it's foreign to them. That's not the Jesus they know. That's not the, because a lot of them, I've come across so many people saying, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, so you start talking to them about the Jesus in the Bible, and they don't know who he is. That's not the Jesus, that's not the real Jesus. Yet you show them scripture after scripture, this is the real Jesus Christ. God fully and completely, Jesus Christ. Nobody wants anything to do with them. And I believe Satan came in and over time one of the great deceptions that's leading to them worshiping him as Jesus Christ is he crept in and started um, perverting the real, not like physically or actually perverting him, I'm talking about the Bible perverting people's point of view of who the real Jesus Christ is. Oh, and he changes Jesus Christ a little bit in people's point of view, and then a little bit more, and then a little bit to the point where today the Jesus Christ that's preached in all these Babel buildings uh, online, it's not the real Jesus Christ, it's the Antichrist. And that's who people are going to be worshiping, and there's so many people that I believe are saved that are falling away and going back over to the easy believism camp. And we'll get to that once we finish this. Um, so you got repentance, which is biblical, that leads to salvation. Your belief in the finished work of Jesus on the cross does not save you. So when you hear someone say, faith alone, you're saved by your faith, they are servants of Satan or they've been deceived and they're passing on that deception. You are not saved by your faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. You are not saved by your faith and repentance towards God. Okay? And we'll, get to, we'll get to it here in a second. Uh, the third part, confess both repentance and belief to God in prayer. Romans 10.10, 10, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So, confession comes before salvation. It takes faith to confess to a God you can't see. But does that faith save you? No, it does not. Okay. Last part, ask God to save you. Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay? God's the one that saves people. And when you say, I'm saved by faith alone, you're turning faith into works. You're saying, I'm saved by faith through God's grace, and that's the true teaching of this easy believism. They're saying they're saved by their faith through God's grace. They're flipping it around. And by doing that, it's no longer a gift, you know, it's a gift of God, not of works. They've turned faith into works, and it's no longer a gift because they've earned it with their faith. They just have faith, and they've earned it. I believe in you, Lord. You have to save me. That's the easy believism. Now, applying this, a lot of this is already done. 
But in the last year, it's really hit hard where people are trying to take prayer out of it. You don't have to confess to the Lord that you're a sinner. And you don't have to confess to the Lord and everybody around you that, you know, you believe in Jesus Christ. And you call upon the name of the Lord to save you. You don't have to do that. They took repentance out a while back, uh, but now they're taking prayer out. It's just a state, in other words, your whole religion, when your faith alone, is just a state of mind. If I feel like I'm saved, I must be saved. If I want myself to be saved, then I must be saved. It's not about God saving you anymore. And they've totally destroyed the gospel according to scriptures. They've totally destroyed the road map leading to that free car. Where you get there and say, okay, you're here, here's your free car. You don't have to pay a penny. Here's the keys. God does not, according to them, God no longer saves people. It's your faith that saves you. You've got people that are into um, being saved. You've got those cults out there where they make you do works, 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 and they keep you under submission and bondage because that's how they control you. And you've got people that once stood for the true gospel of Jesus Christ, the true gospel that's found in here, the true road map to God saving you. They've turned their back on it and they've gone to the easy believism crowd because they like being part of the group. They've, they've fallen into temptation. If you've seen some of my videos for encouragement to the body of Christ where I have fallen into temptation and sin and I've had conviction and I feel like junk, and you've got people out there that have also done the video about conscience, your conscience. Their conscience gets weak. They love their sin. They used to struggle with it. Because when you become a Christian, a true Bible-believing, God-fearing, born-again Christian, you're going to struggle with the flesh hardcore. You didn't struggle with it when you were lost. Now that you're saved, you're going to struggle with it. And people are going to those camps because they are truly saved. I believe they're saved. They got saved off this gospel. But they turn their back on it because with the easy believism, now they can give in to their flesh. They can give in to their sin. They don't, I'm tired of struggling. I'm going to just go over to this camp because then I can give in to my flesh. The people who believe that you have to do good works to stay saved... Um, a lot of people go to those camps because it's part of a group. They want to be part of that group because for some reason they have friends, they have family. Um, you're, like Mormons, a lot of them, you get, you're guaranteed to get married and have tons of children. And you, you find women that are brainwashed and they're basically your slave. Okay? I don't believe in that. But people are doing it and the falling away is getting worse and worse. You get online, it's hard to find any true Bible-believing, God-fearing Christian men and women that still stand for the true gospel. And the number one reason that lost people can't figure this out, like professing Christians, 2 Corinthians 4.3, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. And the reason that is, they don't want to change life. you got people like Edward P.F., and you've got Robert Breaker, you've got uh, Steve Anderson, and you've got these Babel buildings, and you've got all these people, and the reason they teach easy believism is they don't want to give up their sin. They love their sin. They love manipulating people. They love deceiving people. But they know the majority of the people on this planet do not want to give up their sin. So they say, hmm, how can I be popular? How can I make a lot of money? I guess the only way to do it is give the people what they want. Let's give the people what they want. They want to keep their sin and be saved. We're going to give it to them. And the biggest thing that I look back now and it totally confuses me. Three years ago, to two years, like two to three years ago, uh, you had people on King James Video Ministries like Deborah Gill and some other people that were like, we like Robert Breaker and we like Brother Brian and they're the only two 
honest to goodness Bible believing teachers and everything. And you had Deborah Gill on King James Video Ministries saying, I believe in this gospel right here. This is the true gospel. Um, and those who believe in easy believism, it's only believe, they're heretics, they're false, they're lost and on their way to hell. I remember her saying things to that. I'm paraphrasing, but she stood for that. And then I looked at, like, this whole thing came up with the Godhead and people saying, hey, Robert Breaker isn't saved. I always heard about Robert Breaker. I have a hard time following two ministries because a lot of people will just watch a video and go, they don't rewatch it, rewatch it, rewatch it. Go through scripture after scripture after scripture, make sure it's true, and then down the road go over it every once in a while to keep it fresh in your heart. They don't do that. A lot they've subscribed to 50 million teachers and they just watch their video once and go, yay. Like they're watching a TV show. They don't take it seriously. But I have a hard time following two ministries along with me doing my own Bible studies. So I didn't get over to Robert Breaker's camp. So I didn't say he was lost, I didn't say he was saved, I didn't know, a lot of people just kept saying, hey, and Deborah Gill was one of them, that Robert Breaker's great, he's great, man, he's great. And now looking back, he taught only belief. It's only belief. So Deborah Gill, who stood for this gospel, who says she was saved off of this gospel, when she was at Brian's camp, Oh, it's, it's repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confessing both in prayer, and calling upon the Lord to save you. And then, when she was over at Robert Breaker's camp, oh, that's heresy, you know, it's, it's only believe. It's just, you're supposed to have faith, faith alone. And anybody else who adds to it, it's works-based salvation, they're heretics, they're lost and on their way to hell. What do you call that? Double-tongued. Right? A serpent, a snake. Okay, uh, if you read the book of Galatians, Apostle Paul was having the same problem with Galatians only when it came to works versus faith. Okay, it takes faith to do all of this, but you're not saved by your faith. But when he was there, it was by faith. Okay, we come to salvation, God saved us through faith. And then when he was gone, there was other people there coming in to spy out their liberties, as it say, and bring them into bondage. And they were telling me you had to go back under the law, and it was works to be saved. So when Paul was gone, it's work to be saved. When he comes back, oh, you're saved by God through faith. God saves you through your faith. Okay? Same thing here, I was realizing. And it's not just Deborah Gill, there was a lot of people that knew this was what Brother Brian, the same gospel from day one. And they loved Robert Breaker's teaching, they overlooked his gospel, which you have to be mentally ill, a fool, or so desperate to overlook someone who gets online and does a ministry to overlook their gospel, their false gospel. They stood for this, but they still liked Robert Breaker. Robert Breaker. Why? Because Robert Breaker teaches it's your feelings and your opinions. That's all that matter. Not absolute truth, your feelings and opinions. But Deborah Gill also called um, Edward P.F. Uh, he's lost, he's a heretic, he's on his way to hell. Only a, a crazy nut would have anything to do with him. And I'm paraphrasing, but she said you'd have to be mentally ill, you know, pretty foolish to follow that guy. And just recently, someone linked a video of that uh, Edward P.F. does, and I don't like watching any of his videos to give him any uh, press, as they say, but when someone says so-and-so said this or did this, I go look only because I'm not going to turn around and just parrot what somebody else says. Oh, he said he did it. He must have done it. So I'm looking on there, and I'm looking at some of the comments, and Deborah Gill's on there. He's tacking Brother Brian, and Deborah Gill's on there going, Yay, way to go, Edward P.F. Wait a minute. First, he's lost and on his way to hell, and no, nobody would have anything to do with him that's truly saved, and now Deborah's over there applauding him. He teaches a false gospel. And more and more people that were saved off this gospel is turning their back on it so they can go hang out with the easy believism crowd. They're turning their back on the true gospel as far as preaching it and 
and standing by it because they can get back into their sin and try, they're trying to reclaim their old life. And you talk to a lot of these people and if they still talk to you and they're having hard times. They've got the Holy Spirit, they won't listen to the Holy Spirit. They won't listen to their own conscience. God is chastening them. And they're still ignoring God. And we know what happens next. <laughs> but I believe that, you know, before God kills anybody and brings them home, I believe we're really close to the catching away of the body of Christ. So one of the biggest things that we have a great falling away that we knew about already, but it's getting worse in the sense that more and more Bible-believing Christians are not standing for the Word of God. They're not standing for truth, and they're falling away. They're giving in to their flesh, and they're going to the easy believism camp. Because over there, they can live in wicked, wicked, wicked sin, and everybody will still love them and pat them on the back and say, good job. They think they're getting away with it. And they're not. And I express this to the brothers and sisters in Christ out there that still stand for the true gospel. Don't falter. Don't faint. Put up prayer requests on my channel, uh, uh, Brother JT's channel, Brother Brian's channel. Um, put up prayer requests. Say, hey, I'm struggling with this sin. Please pray for me. And us brothers and sisters in Christ that read that prayer request, we'll throw down Bible verses to encourage you not to, get in to, to give in to that temptation to fall into sin. And if you have fallen in sin, to motivate you to repent, forsake, and move on. Do not falter. Do not fall. Stand, stand, stand. But how great is the falling away today? How many people actually believe in the true gospel today? Another big thing about the falling away when it comes to the gospel, there's a falling away. And if easy believism, faith alone, was the true gospel, how come the whole world is bought into it and believes in it and just loves it? Where's the falling away? The Bible said there will be falling away. Where is it? Could it be that those who have turned their back on the true gospel have gone to a fake, false gospel? Yeah. And the reason, I think I already said this, the reason the lost, this is directed at saved brothers and sisters in Christ, but the reason the lost reject the true gospel is because they don't want the changed life. They try to say the changed life is works-based salvation. Mm -hmm. Number two, this has already been out for a long time, but the falling away is not about new teachings coming out. It's about people falling from their stands of absolute truth. And remember, the gospel is the most serious thing ever. The Bible version issues really close, like tied, only because you can't get the true gospel if you don't believe there's a perfect written word of God. But how serious are brothers and sisters in Christ taking this falling away? Praying for the brethren, trying to encourage the brethren, ask those who are falling into temptation of sin, um, who are under attack for standing for the true gospel, are they asking, are you asking for prayer left and right? That's what prayer is for. Ask for prayer. Two, pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching the way of the body of Christ. Okay? Catching, caught up is in the Bible. Catching and caught, you look at the definition. Okay? But caught up, we're going to be caught up, and we call it the catching away. Now, I could go into all kinds of stuff, there's tons of verses, but my favorite, and I'll link them down below, uh, my favorite videos that I'll push you guys to is, my favorite of all time is the false god of post tib Christians. Would a righteous God, a righteous judge, a perfect judge, pour out his wrath on the righteous along with the wicked? Throughout the whole Bible, he never, God never, ever does that. Yet, all of a sudden, these people who turn their back on the pre-time of Jacob's trouble and go for a post-trib or uh, post-trib or mid-trib, post-wrath, I can't remember how it goes. Um, there's all kinds of things. Uh, there is no time of Jacob's trouble. It happened way back when. And everything to pull people away. But a good video is the false god of post-trib Christians. 
Um, there's the pre-time of Jacob's Trouble videos, and these are on King James Video Ministries. Post-trib thieves was a really good one. Does the church need to be purified by the Great Tribulation? Another good one by Brother Brian. And um, like I said, with the gospel, if you don't believe, I mean, if you never ever stood for this gospel, the true gospel of Jesus Christ, you're lost and on your way to hell, and you need to get saved. But a lot of people started out with this. This is how they got saved, which means they are saved, but they've fallen away from it. Pre-time of Jacob's trouble, bottom line, you believe you're going into that seven-year period, and you've always believed it, you're going to go through it because you're lost and on your way to hell. And you need to get saved. But a lot of people who believed the true gospel, who believed in the pre-time of Jacob's trouble, and this camp they want to be part of, they believe in a post-trib. But I've got a lot of good friends over there, and I really like the teacher's teaching on everything else, but this, I, I, kind of, I know he's wrong in this, and they start going over there and fellowshipping with lost people. They're fellowshipping with a servant of Satan because he's off in a major area, but he, he's right in every other area. And they pull you over there, and the next thing, what do they do? They get you to turn your back on the pre-time of Jacob's trouble. Your conscience, by hanging out with them that teach anything but a pre-time of Jacob's trouble, your conscience becomes weak. And as it becomes weak, you give in. Well, you know what, maybe, it, maybe we won't be going before the time of Jacob's trouble. So, it's not about the new teachings, it's about, and I'm sighing because how many people have turned their back on the pre-time of Jacob's trouble? It's like they're turning their back on the book, they're calling themselves King James Bible believers, and they're slowly turning their back on everything this book stands for. They grab what they want, and they throw out the rest. They ignore Scripture, they add to Scripture. And it's like, and I keep saying this over and over, Bible-believing Christians, the true Christians that are left in this world, we're dropping like flies. Pray, pray, pray. Ask for prayer. Okay, Ask for encouragement. Brothers and sisters of Christ, we should be out there encouraging the brethren, left and right, especially in these last days. Another thing, eternal security, the great falling away. Now, See, Ephesians 4.30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed into the day of redemption. Now, I truly believe that the grieve not the Holy Spirit here, it's talking about people going back to the gospel, where people are like, you know what, I love the things I did before I was saved. I love the sinful, wicked things I did, and I miss those. And I, I can't stand that there's hardly any fellowship out there. And I miss, some people have said, the fellowship when I was a professing Christian, when it's not fellowship, it's the social club. I miss the social club. And what they do is they try to go back to the old man. And grieving the Holy Spirit here is when you try to go back to the old man. And you're not to do that. The old man is dead and buried with Christ. And you've got people trying to go back there that once stood for the true gospel, and now they turn their back on it. They once stood for the pre-time of Jacob's trouble, now they turn their back on it. 1 John 5.13, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. It's because we have a perfect written record that you know you're saved. And you're just, and you're, you have eternal life. It can't be taken from you. It's given you by God, and no man can take it from you. Not even Satan can take it from you. John 19.30, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished, and bowed his head and gave up the ghost. You're not working for your salvation. It is finished. Ephesians 1.13, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Okay. And I've said this before, the people that's on the easy believism camp, they've turned faith into works, and they're deceiving people. You're saved by your faith through God's grace. That's not what Ephesians says. 
Okay? It says you're saved by God's grace. God's the one who saves you through faith. Faith in repentance, faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, faith in confessing to a God you can't see, and faith in calling upon the name of the Lord to save you. They believe they've earned, and they're not they're very subtle and very tricky about it because they're snakes, the leaders that teach this. Easy believism at the Babel buildings, even online. But they're teaching that you've earned salvation by your faith, and at that point, you can do whatever you want. You can live however you want, you can believe whatever you want, as long as you, I'm talking about other things like the pre-time of Jacob's trouble, eternal security, you can believe whatever you want. All you have to say is, I believe in Jesus Christ, and you're saved. You're saved. I've heard so many people say that they know people who believe in Jesus Christ, part of the easy believing crowd, easy believism crowd, that say the King James Bible is not that big of an issue. As long as they believe in Jesus Christ, they're saved. I mean, all the Bibles basically teach the same gospel, right? Wrong. Um, bottom line, eternal security. If you are not eternally secure, you are lost and on your way to hell. It's that simple. If you believe that you're saved by your faith, something you are doing, it's not a gift from God because it's something you are doing. If you believe you have to maintain good works to be saved, you are on your way to hell. How many people have turned their back on eternal security? How many people have gone over to Mormonism? How many people have gone over to Jehovah's Witness? How much of the world is Catholic? I mean, all the new versions are Catholic Bibles. Everybody's going Catholicism. How great is the falling away? And are you taking it seriously? Are you standing for absolute truth? And I hear a lot of brothers and sisters in Christ say, I'm standing for absolute truth. But are you holding the brothers and sisters in Christ accountable? Are you lifting them up? I've heard brothers say, I usually don't make comments on videos. You don't have to argue with people on videos. And I'm not saying that you have to comment. But there are times when you should comment. I'm praying for the brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm praying for the body of Christ. I'm praying for the brethren. Um, for the temptation of not falling into sin. To stand. Uh, you see a brother say something. Oh, I'm praying for you, brother. I'm praying for you, sister in Christ. You're having hard times. The cares of this world are trying to drown you up to get you to turn your back on this. We're praying for you. Um, you need help. I mean, if it's in my power to help, we'll help. The brothers and sisters in Christ helping one another. Um, just a lot of people, they like to keep silent. We desperately need prayer today for the brothers and sisters in Christ. How great is the falling away? Are you taking it seriously?